Hello and welcome to Yamaha Synthesizers International Livestream Tech Talk. Thank you for watching, whoever's here. Um, I'm Blake Angelos from Yamaha US, and as always, joining me um, is our small but efficient team of international experts from Germany, Hans Peter Hinkel. Hello, Hoppe. Hello, Blake. How are you? I am good. I'm cold. It's cold yeah. where I live right now. But oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Zero yeah, degrees. It's also also getting cold a little bit in Germany, but probably not that cold <laughs> as on your side. Yeah. Yeah, it definitely got cold here, and we have a windstorm coming. Yeah, December in the Pacific Northwest is almost here. Anyway, mm. um, so it's good to see you. Um, yeah, and good. also joining us from France is Joel Borg. Hello, Joel. Hello, Blake. Hello, Happy. How are you? Hello, Joel. Hello. Yeah, fine, fine. I'm good. Mm -hmm. Everybody's good. I see in the comments Manuela Montesante is watching us live. Hello, Manuela. Hey, Manuela. I see, oh, <laughs> I see him saying there. Hello from Paris. Lots of people here. Um, so, what are we talking about? Well, today is, um, I missed the last one, but I'm back for part three of our um, series on arpeggios in Montage Modi X, Modi X Plus. Um, so, let's get started and talk about what we're talking about today, which is creating user arpeggios. Um, so, um, you can create arpeggios on board on Montage Modi X, Modi X Plus in two different ways. One of them is in the song recorder. Um, after a song is created, if you touch on the song name, you'll see a little crawl that shows up in the touch screen um, that will say, select a user ARP, and you can create it there. I personally prefer to use the, the performance pattern recorder. Um, it's under edit job under user ARP. I'm gonna show you how all that stuff works um, as we go through this tech talk. Um, you can also create um, sequences with the DAW and import them into a song or a pattern recorder as MIDI files and convert it to an arpeggio. And there are some definite benefits to doing that that Hoppe is going to show you as well. Um, and Joel's going to show you some stuff on creating drum arpeggios. Um, but I'm going to start it out and just talk about the basics and show you a few things that I, um, that I like about, um, you know, that I like to show people when you create a user arpeggio and how it works. Um, so first up, um, User, general information about these user arpeggios. You can create arpeggiated phrases, chords, bass lines, drums, and percussion grooves, um, all of that with the arpeggio creation. Now, when you're creating an, an arp phrase, just general thing, you, are, um, you have up to 16 unique notes per arp phrase. So what does that mean? You have up to 16 notes that you can play before you don't... You know, if you need more than 16 notes, what do you do? You create a track. Arpeggios are really more designed for creating um, little grooves, little... Um, uh, chord progressions, um, melodies, bass lines, all that kind of stuff. So they're very cool because you can create these little objects and move them around to different perf performances and parts and so on. Anyway, I'll show you that in a second. Um, you can assign different um, convert types as well that determine how the arpeggio is going to play. You have normal, which plays back kind of similar to how arpeggio or how, how an auto accompaniment um, um, works with with chord recognition. Um, that's the normal one. I'm going to show all these in a moment as well. Um, fixed which means no matter where I play on the instrument, it's going to play back the same phrase at the same octave. And then you have one that's called org notes or original notes. That's short for, um, that's what that's short for. But um, it's like fixed, whereas you can play a single note, it will play exactly the, the, uh, the arpeggio. But as you play up, um, another key, it will change key, and then it also will play, um, when you play a chord, it will play the notes of that chord. So let's show, let's talk about how that actually works. And what I did here was, um, let me change my screen here to my overhead. Um, I want to mention there's some great articles that Phil Clendenin, and Bad Mister wrote that are up on YamahaSynth.com. One of them is just Arpeggio Making 1, Arpeggio Making 2, and then one called the 4-Track Arpeggio. Go up to Yamaha Synth and check those articles out um, because they're, they're, a lot of what I'm going to show here are, is contained in that article. Um, so one thing that he shows that I like to show is I take a very basic melody that everyone knows and then use these convert types to show you how how they work. And in this case, what I did was I sequenced, because it's festive and it's a public domain song, Jingle Bells. Everybody knows that. It's a little four measures of festive right there. That's repeating now. 
So I wanted to use that since you know what that melody sounds like. Most people, I think, know that melody. And I'm going to convert these. Um, actually, I already converted them already. I'll show you how I did it, too. You go to Edit Job, and then you're over here in the User ARP area over here. And in this case, I'm not creating a multi-track four-part arpeggio. Um, I'm just going to create the track, which is on track one of that song, Jingle Bells. And then you have your ARP track. The convert types are right here. Normal, like I said before, um, fixed, and org notes. So I already created these. And how I would do it, just I just hit store as user arpeggio. I can name it here and name it however I want to. I can also assign it to a category if it's a piano or a pad or a drum groove. Um, you can also have subcategories that you can assign as well um, for um, using the category search in the ARP to find these things. I'm just going to find, they'll, they'll just appear in the user ARP section. So I've already created these. I'm going to go back to my CFX stage sound here, and I'm going to select that part, hit edit, and go to individual, which you see right here, um, under ARP, arpeggio, individual, and we'll just find that user arpeggio. Here are my user arpeggios. Jingle norm, so that's the normal playback of jingle bells. Jingle fixed, um, the fixed note, and jingle um, let's start with fixed. So I've created that. I'll turn on my ARP and check this out. Fixed means wherever I play on this keyboard, it's going to play jingle bells. If I go up here, same exact thing. This is why this is great for drum grooves, and Joel will show you that in a minute. Fixed. Simple. Let's try another one here. Um, now let's go to uh, norm. Normal. So with this one, if I play a single note, it's going to be the most boring version of Jingle Bell you've ever heard. So what if I play a major chord, these three notes here? So you see what the arpeggiator is doing there. What if I played a diminished chord with a, with a fifth up? It's going to be the darkest version. So it's playing whatever. There's A flat minor. Or whatever. That's what the normal, um, the normal uh, convert types does. Convert types. Convert types. Convert types. Convert types. Let's do that one. Um, and then lastly, you have org note. Now, org note. This is a cool one. This is one that I like to use mostly when I create my own user arps, because wherever I play on the on the keyboard, B flat, it's going to play with when I play one note, it's going to play it exactly like a fixed, but it's moving. Right? But if I play a chord, now it's going to play like the notes that I actually selected here, the keys pressed. So check it out. If I want to play Jingle Bells and I want to play it like, if I play all of those notes, I think it'll get them all. Now if I pull the F out, so I'm just playing C, D, E. And G, you'll hear the, uh-oh, because the fourth wasn't, if I play that fourth in there, now it'll play it right. So those are the different types on how they, how they convert. Um, I really find that to be a great way to explain a little bit on how the arpeggiator works in this instrument and how those convert types um, affect the playback of the arpeggio that you create. So there you go. That's the first thing I want to do. The second thing I like to do is I'll show you very briefly how I create a four track arpeggio and how you can use these convert types and some other things to create some pretty cool stuff. So with this one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select, um, this is CFX stage. So it's the same as that CFX stage that we had before. But what I did was I copied um, the part one into parts three, four, and or parts two, three, and four. So I have four tracks to work with, individual tracks. Now, when I convert this, it's going to take all four tracks and put them into the single ARP. So it only it, I don't I'm it, it will only work with one part, right? It's because that's how arpeggios works. So it it takes those four tracks and combines it into a single ARP object. But each of those tracks, I can assign how they're going to play back. So check this out. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to hit record, and I'll put. Everything set here. It's going to be just four measures. Um, and I'm going to first start with maybe a bass. Let's move the octave a little. And we'll just play some stuff in here. Let's do it.
bass line, right? Let's select part two here. Maybe drop into record rehearse mode and just see what Okay, I got something. is I'm just going to play, let me put it into record rehearse mode, just some stuff that's sort of like a rhythmic part, and you'll see why I'm going to use that in a second, because the fix type allows me to create a, it's coming right off the show, so record it, here we go. my four tracks, right? Now I'm going to create this. I'm going to turn this into a user art. So drop to edit job. Now I have those other tracks here. Remember, I just, the first one with jingle bells, I just used a single track. I'm going to go to track two, ARP track three, and ARP track four. And with this one, again, I am very much a fan of the org notes type because of its flexibility of being both a single note that will play the whole ARP, but if I decide to play a chord, it will force those notes um, to play the chord as much as it can. There's like I put a, this was in C and I played a D flat in there as kind of a sidestep up. So that will probably not, that will probably be played as well. But, um, but if I played a C chord over that, most of it will be in C. Let's just hear what happens, and I won't talk so much. Um, I'm going to do the or, or the org notes root. I'm going to put that down at C because I kind of want this to play in this section. You'll see what happens here. And then, of course, that four, because it's just doing that chink, chink, a chink, chink as a rhythmic thing, that's going to be fixed. It's always going to play that way in this four track. So I'm going to name this as well, and I'll just name this uh, T, T, four, track. Sure. Boom. And then we're going to go storage user up. We'll be able to find it here in a moment. There it is. Now, what I like to do with this is we were using the piano before. How about I just select a different sound like this electro codes one? This is a cool. One of my favorite kind of synth comp sounds in here. So we're going to go over here to performance, select the part, drop into edit, go to my individual here. And we'll find my user ARP that I created, TT4 track, right here. So, turn on the ARP and let's hear what happens here. And you notice also, check it out. You hear that pitch bend? When you record these ARPs, realize that you can put in controllers. I could have maybe swept the filter. I did move the pitch bend just to illustrate that you can record re record some pretty cool um, different uh, controllers like, you know, again, uh, cutoff frequency resonance, any continuous controller um, can be recorded and embedded in those arms. So again, because I used org. So last thing I like doing with this is you can kind of mess around with how this ARP plays back. So one thing that I like to do is I'll put maybe the ARP so it plays only in this octave here, and it's pretty easy to do under note limit. This is under arpeggio common. I'll put the low down here, and I'll put the high up here, right? So I have this set for a note limit that's gonna, that won't play back here. Now, the other thing is when you go to the key mode, and I think they talked about this in the last Tech Talk that I unfortunately missed, um, the different... Um, key modes that you have in here. I am a big fan of through plus direct because it allows me because to play, but I can also trigger the art. And I can also turn on hold if I want to play over that. And 
another thing I love about this too, by the way, is adding a drum groove to it. You can drop that rhythmic pattern in it. It's going to create a new part and have a, uh, a rhythmic pattern that I can add to it. And one that I was messing with earlier is this Delio kit. So I want it all to play to start at the same time. So now I have a drum groove. A drum groove, however, is swinging. And this arp isn't. But I have these cool playbacks right here, right? Right? You have the, the when you go down to arp motion sequence area here, the knobs, see them right there? Good, you do. I can take, I can take the arpeggio gate time, cut it back a bit, and then have this swing a bit more so it's... Pretty cool. ARP, creating user arpeggios. So there's one way to do a quick four track user ARP. Um, and that's it. And it's great because I added that drum groove because it's a nice segue to turn it over to Joel Borg because he's going to talk to you now about creating um, fixed note rhythmic drum patterns. So take it away, Joel, and I'll see you later. Thank you, Blake. Nice, nice, very nice presentation with the four tracks. So let's go to the drum. So I take a drum, a preset drum, uh, the Beachwood snare kit. And uh, I want to create an arpeggio. I want to show you uh, two ways to do this. Uh, because we are we have online on the chat Manuele, and not everybody is Manuele and can play all the drums directly. So I want to show you uh, instrument by instrument, and after with the loop, like uh, Blake have done. So to record, you uh, press rec and uh, like Blake, uh, I like uh, to use the pattern mode because you can have the loop if you need, you can have all the things. Um, I will be more focused for people who doesn't know too much how to record. Uh, the first thing you need uh, to do if you want to record uh, instrument by instrument to have a, a reference on time is to go here on the top of the screen on the click settings. Because here you can set the click if you want to have it on the rack, play on rack or not. Uh, the pre count, uh, I set one measure, uh, the, vol the level, uh, the beat, and the type. You have 10 uh, sound type for uh, the click, the metronome, uh, as you want, and you press exit when you are ready. And um, when you want to rack, the first thing you need to decide is uh, the length uh, of the measure you want to record. So uh, to go quickly for this episode, I, I set two. If you are not a professional musician, uh, perhaps you need to uh, set the rec quantize. So you can go as example for drums. Normally you can go to 1 and 1 and 20. And uh, I will not use key on start because I want to have the pre-count and uh, to record. And I will not use the loop to record separate instrument uh, by instrument. So Let's uh, go. So I need to press play and then we have the one, two, three, four, and I start to record uh, my drum. Not complicated. So I have uh, my kick uh, drum, and uh, now I want to record the snare. So be careful to one thing when you want to do this. Uh, the first is be sure to come back to zero if you have tried with play, because if you do not come back to the first time, you will start to record in the middle, perhaps. And uh, when you press record or so, on the first uh, record, we are on replace, basically. Uh, if I let replace, when I want to record my snare, it will uh, replace the kick by the snare, and I lose the kick. So you need to pass to overdub to uh, record uh, over. Uh, the kick to have the snare up to this. And now we have the two. So very easy to record like this. And uh, if you think uh, I made a mistake on the snare as example, uh, does I need to remade all? No, you do not need. Uh, I want to show you one way. Uh, I will not press it because we will lose time. But you have this uh, button uh, and uh, media record. And it will 
undo the, the last record. So in this example, uh, if I press on it, it will uh, delay only the snare, and I keep the kick, and I can uh, retry. But perhaps you want to uh, to 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 wreck no uh, in loop because it's more kindly to have the loop, uh, and we can do this. Just uh, set the loop. Uh, we can keep uh, the contives and. Um, Blake, show you a little bit. Uh, when you press play, it started recording. We are on overdub, so it's good. Um, but if you press quickly on the rack, you are on standby mode. So you can try and play, as example. No, I am on standby. It does not record. I can try the things. The instrument I want to record. Things like that. And when I am ready, I can go, be careful to the time, of course, to be sure uh, you'll be ready uh, up to the good time. So we we'll wait a little bit, one, okay. I have it. For the congano. And if you made a mistake, uh, you say, oh, damn, and I need to remade all. No. Let's see. I made a mistake. I do not want this. Here. See, you have shift plus the note. I press shift plus the note. It disappears. So we are ready now uh, to create the arpeggio. So we go to edit job and like a Blake show you, we go to user arp. The uh, thing you need to be uh, sure is to have the good uh, setting here. Uh, you think perhaps uh, we have recorded two measures, so one and two. No, we need to go to three. Always uh, the next measure to have all the one and two here. In this example, if you, if you set four, you need to put five here. Uh, we can put the uh, category for me. It's easy. It's drum. A subcategory, I have add conga latin. Uh, I can add a name. It's more easy to retrieve it. Uh, let's call it uh, uh, TTL uh, rack. I will yes, RC for rack. And uh, I have one track. So easy. Uh, this one, this is my track one. And uh, for the drums, we want to keep it fixed because we want the drum play always the same phrase uh, whatever we play the note, the chords for the other instruments. So we do this. Let's go. It's very quick, it's done. So I just need to go here. I will press this to have the all. I will add my app. I will press edit. I will assign uh, the arpeggio I have record. So I need to go to user. Here on bank category, and I have the TTL RC4 or uh, the rack here. And if I play, we have it. So very easy. But I want to show you uh, one of the tips interesting um, because you know I like uh, do things interesting, uh, and we can do a lot here. Um, I would take an example. You have uh, a preset drum. Uh, like the real drum kit, as example, and uh, you think, yeah, okay, the, the arpeggio is great, it's near what I want to have, but uh, I want to change one instrument, or I want to change a little bit how it play. Uh, so I need to listen to it and to think of it, to record all the things. No, you have some great things you can do for the drums, so let's record it. And like we are recording arpeggio, no, we need to have the key on uh, start to remove the loop because we want it to stop uh, for the four measure here. Uh, I will add the arpeggio uh, and we remove the cantiles because it's already uh, well done, so we do not need to have the cantiles like we start with key on start. So uh, let's record and if we record directly, we are on key on start. And stop. Uh, like I do not do a shift to have the all. I keep my uh, end. And I'm not going to go directly to made an arpeggio because this is the preset. This is the same. What I'm going to do now, I go to edit job 
and we are going to uh, track and to divide drum track. That means that uh, it will divide uh, the the kick, the snare, the charlie, if there are some other instruments, you can uh, separate from separate uh, and different tracks. And it will create a new performance to do this. So let's call it TTL Remix. And it's down. OK. And we are on here. we are on this performance. Uh, if I go here uh, on the play, you can say where are the divide tracks. Uh, and if you uh, press play no, even if I remove this, you see the chorusing sound. <coughs> so uh, you see there is a problem. So we are going to mute this track one, and the divide tracks are here. Here, uh, if I press play, we have the uh, kick here, the snare, and the charlie are here. And now we are going to edit job, and uh, we are going to the play FX. Remember, uh, I go to the Charlie, and for the Charlie uh, on the play FX one, uh, normally this kind of Charlie is record near to uh, 120. So if I set 120 and try to change something, I will not have so much things. So I will change it to uh, 240, and let's play. And change this. Your ear. You change the way the Charlie plays. Can we change the instrument? Yes, we can. Because we are, I will stop, because we are on, on key, on drum key, so each key is a key drum. It's a different instrument. So we can change this. And let's go to here. So change. Um, so for the kick, I will set uh, uh, minus three. And uh, I think if I go to plus two to the, to the snare, it will be good. So more punchy and more um, dry, I would say. Can I fix this? Yes, of course I can uh, fix this. Just like this. And um, to fix this, uh, I need to uh, do it for uh, all. So I can use this to set all. Okay. And uh, we are good for the lens. And uh, I will press on normalize play fix. And you will see all become to zero. No, you do not have the normalized play fix. And no, I can go and create my user app. Uh, I need to set uh, five because I record four measure. Um, I will say it's a drum. Okay, so it's more rock here. So you can use this if you want. And let's call it uh, TTL Remix. OK. And no, I do not want the track one. Remember, the kick are on the track nine. And it's fixed. Uh, the snare is on 11. And I said fix. And uh, the Charlie are 13. And I said fix and you can think perhaps ah but if i have more because i record several instruments more than four tracks or i can do yeah just go here to track and use the mix the mix allow you to mix some tracks one tracks to uh, to copy inside one of and let uh, one track empty so you can do this if you have more than uh, four but here i have three so that's enough i create my use app and uh, i can go and uh, here, go to this one. So I remove the mute and I set the arpeggio on. I will set uh, old uh, and um, I'm going to add it on two to let hear you the differences. Uh, category search, we go uh, not. Mm. Uh, oh, oh, perhaps I made a mistake. Uh, 
<laughs> what are you doing? So let's come back. Not a problem. Uh, ah, because I do not put. Okay. Here. <coughs> Excuse me. I think I have done it, but. That I have it. I have the data. Yes, I have the data, so it's good. Ah. Okay, so so it will change. It come back. Tick, tick, rock. Well, come back. So it's from Chromix. Turn as user app. Normally it's down. Um, let's go to the performance to the part. Edit. Page you Did research. We are news. Yes, this time it's work. So okay, so we can start. <coughs> Excuse me. So the first one, the original. You hear the differences. Uh, the rhythm is not the same. But 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 perhaps you see it's a little bit different. Be careful, I want to make your attention on this point. Be careful because here also you have some things on velocity. And if you want to retrieve the same rendering that we have uh, previously, you need to put it on zero. So it's more strong and it changed uh, and uh, this is all the things I want to uh, show you, I think I have taken enough time. And uh, let's go to see some great, great things with DAW and join AP. So, thanks a lot, Joe. Yeah. Um, I have to um, say something, uh, or I, have, I want to take the chance to apologize for the last session that we did, because I had some serious audio issues. And even though I inv investigated a lot and um, with uh, also a support team, uh, we haven't yet figured out the uh, exact reason. And for that reason, uh, I decided to pre-produce my part for today so that nothing can go wrong with, with the audio again. Um, and so um, I ask our host kindly to uh, now uh, replay the pre-production I did this morning. Thanks so much. Thanks, Joe. So again, we are taking a look at Fortrack Arpeggios, but in this case, uh, we want to take a look at how to divide the different MIDI data using different velocity ranges. If you're looking for good examples from the, uh, from the preset content, you can check out On My Way to UK, the performances On My Way to UK, Chillcom 1 and 2 and Mr. War. These are all really good examples to take a look at. But of course now I want to show you how to create these by yourself. And indeed it's uh, the best way to prepare this kind of uh, four track arpeggios um, is using a DAW. So I'm using Cubase Pro 12 right here, but you can use basically any DAW in the market because it's just about creating MIDI data and exporting a MIDI file, right? Let me show you real quick what I prepared right here. My little project here consists out of four MIDI tracks. The first MIDI track is for the bass drum, second one is for the synth bass, third one for the kind of hook line, and then we have a typical synthesizer uh, sequence, right? So all these four parts you can see um, are prepared to just um, trigger a single part. You can see in my instruments screen here that I just have a single part performance. So all the different instruments are created using different elements within this one part. Um, and
at um, the performance um, or at the part within the performance. So I tap on the part, I tap on edit, and we are um, landing on part settings and general first. And then we can go through all the elements, but there's a page where we can see all the elements together, which is called all. And here you can see, let me uh, show you real quick, all the parts that I'm using here. So the uh, the part number, uh, the sorry, the element number one is um, uh, the bass drum. Then we have element two and three for the synth bass. Element number four is uh, playing this small hook line. And um, five and six is uh, for the synthesizer sequence. And then we have seven and eight, which I prepared to be a pad plate from the uh, instrument's keyboard in addition to the running arpeggio. And um, next step would be to take a look at the MIDI data that I created here. So again, a different view. When I now uh, select my first part here, which is the bass drum part, it opens up in an editor in the lower area here. And here you can see that each of these events in this editor, in this bass drum editor here, in this bass drum part, is set to a velocity of 127, right? And when we are now taking a look at our element in the instrument, you can see that the velocity um, limit is set to 127 to 127. So the bass drum is just reacting on events that have a value of 127, a velocity value of 127. I also did a keyboard split here so that the bass drum is not uh, playing notes above a um, specific note, but that's not the most important part of this. The most important thing is the velocity. Um, moving on to the synth bass. The synth bass events are created to start with a velocity of 80 and above. So this is at least 80 and maybe some are a little bit higher. And you can see in our instrument uh, the elements 2 and 3 are set to play from 80 to 126. 126 is because um, so that they uh, can divide from the bass drum, which is triggered by 127, right? And um, all the three parts are on the left hand side of the keyboard from the keyboard range. Moving on to the hook line, the hook line is set to a velocity, all the notes are set to a velocity of 120 six in this case <clears throat> and of course my element number four is set to 126 again and uh, last but not least the sequence sequence notes here events are set to a velocity of 125 and of course this is part number five and six you can see the limit is set to uh, 125 to 125 so this is how the division between the different um, MIDI data and the different elements is uh, created so that it can play like this um, even with just a single part. But now the important thing is uh, when we export this MIDI file to use it in the instrument and to create our user arpeggio, then we need to uh, separate the tracks again using different MIDI channels because when we import the MIDI file into the uh, arpeggio engine, the arpeggio, uh, arpeggio engine needs to know which track is which uh, different for different um, arpeggios. And uh, for this purpose, before we export the MIDI file, I need to set this uh, second track to 2, the third track to uh, MIDI out channel 3, and number four <clears throat> to number four. There we go. And now I can simply um, go to my file menu, can choose here, oops, sorry, export. And then I go for MIDI file. And then you can just give it a name, store it. And um, I already created this MIDI file, so to save a little bit of time. And now I will change over to the instrument view. And I already have this exported MIDI file on my USB flash drive, which is connected to my instrument. And now I show you how to import this and to create the arpeggio. So, 
first thing I go to the pattern sequencer. I can use play record here or I can even just press on the play button. It takes me directly to the first empty pattern which is called new pattern 6. And then I go to edit job. I go to load MIDI file and I choose my connected USB flash drive and I choose the MIDI file, the one and only that I have on this a flash drive and then I say load. And now you can see on the scene number one all the four tracks are loaded. And now I go to user ARP and then I have to set the end of my range to three because I have two bars here in my sequence or my arpeggio. Now of course I can give it a category again so go for my recent lead and general whatever it doesn't matter I can give it a name I leave it as, as uh, user arp1 which is cool <clears throat> and now uh, what you already learned from Joel is that when we work with uh, drum parts we need to use the convert type fixed so the first track uh, is already selected here for the first arpeggio track and I just need to uh, change this from normal to fixed so that the bass drum will not be transposed or note shifted, right? Then we go to tra ARP track number two and we choose the hour track number two and this should be go to org notes because I want to have all my sequences played like in the original version and so I get, go again for track number three which is the hook line. Again I set this to org notes and number four also, track number four, org notes, enter done. Now I say store is user ARP and that's it so far from here. The cool thing is now that when you want to experiment with, with different convert types, for example, you can just say, okay, I'm choosing a different ARP, the next one, the next empty one. And then you go, for example, you want to say, okay, the synthesizer arpeggio, Maybe I want to check how this sounds like with a normal convert type. You can just set it to normal. You can say, okay, of course, give it another name. User ARP2 is cool. And you can say store as user ARP, right? And so you can check out different convert types with the same data without uh, having the need to uh, load it again and again. Okay, now I go uh, back to performance home screen. I tap on my part again. I go to edit. We're back in the all overview for the elements. I go to common, I go to arpeggio. And the first thing I want to show you here is that the key mode is set to um, sort and direct. You already heard this before from Blake. Sort and direct is to be used so that we can play the arpeggio. And in addition, I can play the pad that I created using the uh, parts number seven and eight, right? So now I get to individual. And on individual, I select my first empty uh, arpeggio slot here. I go to the category search. I search for user. And there are my user arps. I'm going for user arp number one. I press enter. And now when I just press a single note, it plays the complete uh, arpeggio with all four tracks in the key I'm playing, right? So um, this is um, the typical four track arpeggio um, used with just one note. But now when I start playing chords, it adapts the arpeggio to my chords that I'm playing. So for example, and then I can bring in my pad and can play my pad in addition to the arpeggio like this. First I start with a, just a single uh, press and then I change to different chords, for example, right?
So now, for example, when we want to check out how the, how, how the difference is between user ARP number one and number two, I can just uh, use the data view to change to number two. And there you remember that I set the uh, synth arpeggio to normal and you can hear that it sounds quite different. Uh, you can see that I also use the um, uh, individual R, um, assignable knobs here to control the volumes of the different elements. This is all uh, possible using the motion control synthesis engine, which is pretty cool. Yeah, so that's it. a quick overview about four track arpeggios using different velocities uh, to play a kind of complete small track within just a single part. And um, as mentioned, you can go creative with this. You can use different uh, sounds, uh, different elements, and um, you can use different convert types. And yeah, just be creative. And um, it's really fun. And um, yeah, so that's it from my side. Thanks a lot. And um, I would say back to Blake. That was awesome. That right there, he I think he mentioned at the beginning, um, on the way to UK, and I think Mr. Wah, those are two um, performances that are in uh, Montage Modi X, Modi X Plus that you should check out to see how the velocity calls that he was making there, um, uh, that, he, that he, he created for you right there. That's the secret. That is one of the coolest things that you can do with the ARPs. And it's really interesting to look at those um, those presets again on the way to UK. I, or is that right? I think that's the name of it. And uh, and Mr. Wah, I believe, are the two that I can think of. And I think uh, Bad Mister mentions those in his, his articles as well. That was awesome. Thank you, Hoppe. Thank you, Joel. That was just really cool. Um, so yeah, there they are. They're back. Yeah. Very cool. Really. Um, Really great stuff, uh, especially the yeah the velocity calls really do um, do some amazing things. <laughs> you can, well done. Anyway, so I guess the final thing that I have to say here is you know it, it's a cool way to create these sort of objects of groove um, the the arpeggios that you can then use with different sounds, different different uh, performances, and really you know just take what you've seen here and experiment with the um, the user arpeggio. It's it's very cool and it's very useful. Um, I was thinking one of the ways that I like the org notes too is that if you have a synth line, let's say you're in a band and it plays the same way every time and you just don't want to sit there and go woo -wee, woo -wee, woo -wee, the same thing over and over, you can create an arp and 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 just trigger it when you need it in a song, which makes it really nice to be able to do that and maybe do something else while you're triggering an ARP or whatever. Um, anyway, take what you've seen here and experiment. Um, so uh, the last thing I want to say is um, if you have any ideas for a Yamaha synthesizer at all, join our Ideas Scale community. That's um, It's all in the chat or rather in the uh, description for the video, the links for these places. So ideascaleyamahasynth.com is where um, we have an, a community where you can put your ideas for new products and features, idea scale. Um, YamahaSynth.com obviously is where all things Yamaha Synth articles, this tech talk will be, um, um, as soon as we're done here, I'll put it up and uh, you'll be able to go back and watch this tech talk or any other tech talk at YamahaSynth.com. Lots of cool things on articles, behind the synth, our podcast, all at yamahasynth.com. Soundmondo.com is our free social sound sharing site. It supports Montage, Modix, Modix Plus, CP, YC series, uh, all the reface models. Um, it's a great place to get new sound and to upload your own if you decide to do such a thing. Um, that's Soundmondo, our free social sound sharing site. And then I know that Hoppe just released a new version of the music production guide, I believe, like last week or a week before that. Um, check that out. You can, again, it's in the uh, description of the video here. Um, you can have access to guides going back, I believe, to 2009 or so. I think that's right, Hoppe, something yep. like that. So um, that's uh, the music production guide um, .eu to get that. Like and subscribe for more episodes. Um, the last thing I want to say is this we'll be taking a break from Tech Talk for the month of December. 
Um, everybody enjoy your wonderful holiday season. Um, we will be back in January for the next Tech Talk. And for more information, just check YamahaSynth.com for when that will be. Again, January is when we will be back for the next Tech Talk. Um, so I think we've done it. We've done a three-part series on arpeggios. Once again, thank you so much, Joel. Great job. And uh, Hape, as always, amazing. Um, thank you, Blake. Really appreciate it. And we will see you next time, next month, or not next month, but the month after that, January, for Tech Talk. Yeah, Thanks happy holiday, everybody. Have a nice yeah. holiday, everybody. Thanks. Have a good one. Bye. Bye-bye.